You are listening to Hillary Topper On Air, the small business podcast to help you grow both personally and professionally. And now, here's your host, Hillary Topper. According to Forbes magazine, global mergers and acquisitions have plummeted as a result of the coronavirus. M&A levels in the United States fell more than 50% in the first quarter, but one local firm recently merged with another and the principal and CEO is on today's show to talk all about it. His firm is the Long Island based Creative Plan Designs. They recently merged with WIA Consultants, Inc. to form a new financial services company called 9-2. My name is Hillary Topper, and you are listening to Hillary Topper On Air. Congratulations, Ron. And can you tell us a little bit about Creative Plan Designs and about your background? Well, I started off as a child and never quite left. In fact, one of my sons says the best thing about me is I'm a 12 year old with a credit card. But um, no, I started off uh, in this business a long time ago, 1973. I worked for, started working for a firm. Arissa came out, the guy that owned the, the company threw it on my desk, said, learn this. And I did. So I've been around since the beginning of Arisa. 1979, he was forced out because there were certain mandatory retirement ages um, with the underlying company that owned the whole array of uh, the pensions uh, group. And uh, they had mandatory retirement at age 65. So I bought the place because nobody else really wanted to hire me or <laughs> quite frankly, I didn't want to work for anybody else. And, um, so for 40 years, June of 79, I bought Creative Plan Designs and have been there since. Um, we started with about seven people. We're up to 27 people now. And um, we design and administer retirement plans. We don't sell product. We are the compliance geeks. So that's what we do. So tell me about this new company that you formed, 9-2. What is this all about? Well, so I've known Holly Brostek, who was the principal of WIA Consultants for years. And she performs the same services that we do, but in the one to five person employer space. And anytime anything got a little hair on it, it would come to us and we would back off it and support her in, in things that were more complicated. What I've realized is from a marketing perspective, it's a whole underserved section of the population where people don't know what to do. It's not like they have an HR department or they may not have a robust accounting firm behind them. So the question becomes of how do you bring retirement services to that one to 10 person demographic when the individual is really spending his or her day trying to run their little business. And the bigger problem for that is there's no money in it. Because even the financial advisors, if I have a little startup 401k plan and somebody's putting in $50,000, the financial advisor, even if they're charging 1%, they're, they're getting $500 a year. Nobody has the time to sit down and do consulting and hang out with you and talk about the emotional aspects of your retirement for $500 a year. But the world has really pushed everybody into this fee compression world where all anybody cares about is what does something cost rather than what are you getting for it. Holly had a really efficient model together though to deal with that kind of thing where it was not cookie cutter but somewhat streamlined because she just did figured just figured out a way to do it well. So I figured that if, if we just sort of brought the two companies together it would have it would help us in terms of bringing a resource to our accounting and financial advisor uh, partners and be able to take care of their clients rather than setting them off to the 1-800 bite me numbers 
and uh, have them pushed around in that space. And that's what we've been doing. So we have uh, essentially brought the forces together. We've taken a bunch of stuff off Holly and her, her employees' desks because we have certain systems in place that really only does come from the efficiencies of size and to sort of turn them loose to do the things that they do really well. Awesome. Awesome. That's congratulations to you. So let's pivot a little bit about this crazy world that we're living in right now. Uh, like many other Long Island companies, we've all been on this New York pause, right, for months. Um, and you had to be very creative in how you operated day to day. Can you share with us um, how you embraced working from home? Yeah, it, it was interesting because our IT, surprisingly, was very, very tight. Uh, I recently got licensed in the UK. And anytime you're in the uh, EU environment, your cyber liability issues are way greater than they are here in the States. So we had upgraded all of our hardware and software, our firewalls. All of that had recently been done to comply with EU standards. So, and we always had the ability for people to work from home because as you know from prior conversation, we're completely flexible in our workspace. Um, you know, we just won the 101 best and brightest places to work for the fourth consecutive year. We've won the Alfred P. Sloan Award and when work, when work works for the 12th consecutive year. It's a very good place to be an employee. And so people were already set up to work from home on days where, you know, you had to wait for the plumber or your kid got sick or whatever happens in life. It took us about three days after we started doing this because we never stressed the system to that degree that we we're going to have everybody working from home at once. So for example, uh, our VPN licenses only ad accommodated 10 people, but our IT people were right on top of that. And it literally within three days, we had everybody functioning from home. And within two weeks, we had a duplication of what their work space looked like at the office in their house. So for some people, I had to buy them a new printer. Some people, we bought them a second monitor, that kind of thing. So their work environment was replicated. And overall, it's been very, very good. Something that we have been tinkering with for the last three years, I pulled the plug on it. We're going to an, officially go to a four-day work week. Mm. Because the studies have shown that people just, if you have professionals and they work hard and care as we do, they get their work done. So we're going to a four day work week. And as I said to the staff, we're gonna do this until it, until it doesn't work. And after Labor Day, when we, when we allegedly come back to the office, people are gonna tell us whether they wanna take off Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. Two people have said they'd like Wednesday. Two people wanted Monday. But this way, the office can be open five days a week and still accommodate our, our referral partners who may want data on a Friday. Mm -hmm. So that part's been pretty good. The other thing it showed me is when we hire our next three or four people, I thought I was going to have to take more office space. I don't. In fact, when my lease comes up for renewal, I may get rid of some of the office space I have. Oh. Not a good time to be a landlord. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, you know, these, these are the realities. People are discovering they can do this. The downside is our office is you know, almost 30 people that are credentialed, engaged, really consultive. And my management style is management style by walking around. I go in in the morning, I walk around the circuit of the offices, ask everybody how they are, what are they working on, what clients do I need to yell at, that kind of thing. That's sort of gone. Somebody would come up with a question. I would stand in the middle of the office and say who's available, and three to five people would come into the conference room, and we could take the, the question that was raised and have dialogue, because when you're dealing in the tax space, there's not always a clear answer. 
-hmm. And we've, we've lost some of that because now you have to go out and schedule a Zoom call and reconvene a half an hour, 40 minutes later kind of thing. So mm -hmm. we've lost some of that quickness and some of that, certainly a lot of the human touch of it, but we're, we're working through that and we'll try to figure out a way to, to make that more efficient. Now, at the start of COVID-19 pandemic, you decided to promote the unbundling of services. Can you tell our listeners what that means? Sure. So when you go to one of the big payroll companies, for example, they're going to say, oh, we've got your payroll. Why don't you come into our PEO? We're going to give you health insurance. We're going to give you your workers' comp. We're going to give you your 401k plan. We're going, to tell, we're going to upsell you to as many things as we can upsell you to because this is our business model and we have to keep our payroll cost looking like it's cheap, even though it's not. And the problem is it becomes like a Hotel California. One in, it's very hard to get out. And it's not just the payroll companies, the mutual fund companies are doing it. There are big uh, online HR companies that are tying things together. But for the most part, there's this race to the bottom in costs without any regard to what things actually cost to produce. So my attitude is, is you know, my payroll company is Paycor. Let's assume that you really like Paycor, but you don't like their HR component that they may offer. Or you, they don't offer a 401k component, but if they did, I don't like the, the 401k piece. I want to go someplace else. Well, if you're with certain payroll companies and you have that bundled environment, it's very hard to chop off your arm to take it out because it's all tied together. So I may really love their payroll, but I may really not want to be part of their 401k plan. Or I may not really want their HR services. So in our bundled on bundled environment, we have three payroll companies that we work with. We have an outsourced HR company that we work with. We have a handful of qualified financial advisors that can work on the investment piece of the 401ks and other types of retirement plans. And you have us as the TPA. If the client decides they don't like our services, they can keep everything else intact and go find another TPA to plug into that system. It may or may not work as, a, as smoothly, but we have worked out all of the electronic exchange of those different pieces. Similarly, some of my clients have decided, yeah, they really don't need HR. They do, but that's another story. Because, <laughs> well, in today's world, you stub your toe, you say something inappropriate, and you get sued. Yeah. Sure. So I can tell you my HR person, her, her big marketing piece is we'll be in a room, and somebody will say, how do we know you're any good? And she'll point at me and say, he hasn't been sued yet. <laughs> which I think is good advertising, quite frankly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so that's what the unbundling is. So we can bundle all of those pieces together and bring you that comprehensive one-stop shopping if that's really what fits your needs. But if it's not, that's okay. So literally this morning, one of our clients called and said, I want to change my financial advisor or my whole investment platform. Okay. Anything else we need to know about? Had a conversation with the new financial advisor. He asked me who we particularly care for for record keeping versus who we don't care for. Gave him our list. He said, I can work with them. Fine. It, it's almost like a plug and play piece. Nothing else really gets disrupted though. And especially in today's world where we are working electronically and or certainly not in that human face-to-face -face space, it's, it's more, it, it's, it's actually becoming an interesting dynamic. Now, I heard that you developed a new hashtag to promote this whole approach. It's called hashtag unbundled is the new black. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? I could, but I know nothing about it because that was Rochelle's idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you think about it, everything is the new black. 
You know, years ago, there was a book that was bitter as the new black because everybody was an angry elf. Then we had orange as the new black on the TV show. <laughs> so, you know, and little black dresses never go out of style. So <laughs> what's the new black? And so that was just unbundled as yeah. it. There you, there you have it. <laughs> um, you know, it was just a, it's something that, you know, Rochelle came up with this in, in, yeah. in, in marketing and, and people seem to understand what it means. Very cute. Well, once you understand, once you explain un unbundled to them. That's true. That's true. So talk to me a little bit about not, we're going to go back to nine two. What do you think is setting nine two apart from the competition? And what are some of the distinguishing factors uh, that you can share with the listeners? Well, we're a very crowded landscape. So surprisingly, the TPA world are the gatekeepers for $27 trillion that's in the retirement sector. It's a highly legislated and overly complicated sector of the, of the law. But yet you can legally hang out a shingle to compete with me because there are zero licensing or credentialing requirements to do what we do, which is fascinating. So you, there's 297 firms within 100 miles of Manhattan that do what we do, allegedly. I've got eight competitors. And that, that's the problem. So you have firms like ours where we're CFEX certified, which is the highest standard in our industry. There's only 61 firms nationally that are CFEX certified. We're one of only two on Long Island and one of only three in the metropolitan area. Um, Everybody in my office is credentialed. Eight of us have treasury department licenses. We do three times the required CE every year, as opposed to somebody who hangs out a shingle, went to school for sociology, has a piece of software, and the client that we just picked up from him, we're going to say the client was looking at $1.6 million in penalties for mistakes made in the plan. And the client says, but he said he was a TPA. He is a TPA. He's just not credentialed. So those are the kinds of things that we run into. And, you know, a lot of times people think, I don't care, but the governments are very, very hungry. They are looking for penalties. They are looking for ways to grab, to disgorge money from you as the individual to put into the government coffers. And it doesn't matter whether it's the city, the state, the federal government. We have multiples of levels of uh, regulatory agencies in the pension space. We have the IRS, we have Treasury, we have the PBGC, we have the Department of Labor. They are all looking for money and they all have the ability to make your life un unpleasant. So this is not an area where you wanna save $14 because somebody looks cheaper on paper. What are you getting for it? So we had a client that decided, a potential new client, that the plan design was horrific. It wasn't broken, but they were giving $2 million a year more to the employees than they needed to be. So they went out for an RFP, and I'm not always the most tactful when I'm telling people what a mistake they made. Um, in fact, one of my posts once was the, the client had actually asked me, he says, are you going to help me? Or are you going to make fun of me? And I said, why can't I do both? Uh, <laughs> so the end result is he said, you know, we're going to go somewhere else. And my response was very clear. I said, if you're going to pick one of these seven firms, you, make, you made a mistake. Here, here are the names of the four firms in the metropolitan area that can actually fix your problem. And I don't know who he picked. Don't care, but I gave, I went down a list of suspects and narrowed out the four that would, would be competent enough to deal with it. And that's okay, I just want the person's life to get made okay. And we'll move on to the next one. We're really busy. So when you ask about differences, when COVID hit, that was March 13th, we made a decision we weren't going back to the office. By March 17th, we were contacting every one of our retirement plan clients that had a required contribution. 
And we started talking to them and their accountants about ways to get rid of their required contribution in 2020. And it's time consuming, it's emotional. Money's emotional and people are trying to find money to fund their 2019 contribution. But at the same time, we're talking about, you still gotta do that, but what are we doing for 2020? And those calls, I was literally running from 6.30 in the morning to eight or nine o'clock at night, because we've got clients in 29 states and nine countries. And this was going on for six and seven days a week until probably much last week. And we have gotten rid of all that, but in the process, we've picked up eight new clients because the accounting firms or the financial advisory firms were realizing nobody else was doing this with their clients. And I said, can you talk to my brother who's got a company? Cause his guy's not talking to him. I read an article this morning. They said that 31% of people that were contacted by the, by this uh, poll, had not heard from their financial advisor through wow. this entire COVID compo thing. That's incredible. 47% on the pension side have not heard from their TPA or their pension consultant. And the ones that did hear from them, for the most part, were not offering solutions. They were saying, we're not allowed to give you advice. We're not tax people. You know, go download the forms. So in, the, in this world that we're trying to make everything cheaper, we're getting rid of humans. Computer technology is less expensive than a human being, and a human being is less expensive than a trained human being. And then even if you're trained, compassion and empathy comes into play, and that requires more time. And the commonality of excellence in any profession is time. So you either want it right, or you want it cheap but there's really not a lot of middle ground. Thank you. Uh, that, that was great and, and really insightful. And I think that our listeners will get a lot out of this. Could you tell our listeners how to get in touch with you and uh, Creative Plan Designs and 9-2? Sure. So the easiest thing is our website, which is cpdltd.com, or call us at 516-742-6123. And my email is rstair, R-S-T-A-I-R, like you walk up, at cpdltd.com. Thank you, Dr. Ron Stair, Creative Plan Design in 9-2. I'd also like to thank our sponsors, the Russo Law Group, The Profit Express with Tim Healy, Pop International Galleries, The Donna Drake Show, and Fortune I'll Find Jewelry. And last but not least, I want to thank you all listeners for tuning in. If you want more information on this show or any other show, you can visit us at hillarytopperonair.com. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud. We're even on Amazon Alexa. I hope you have a great week and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Hillary. I hope your week went the best ever. <laughs> Did you hear Alexa? <laughs>